My name is John Sundman. I'm a novelist. I've written a bunch of books that are generally considered to be like philosophical cyberpunk kind of stuff. My first novel, Acts of the Apostles, is about a Silicon Valley evil genius and nanomachines he created to rearrange DNA inside of people. I wrote another book called Cheap Complex Devices about a couple of artificial intelligence constructs that are run amok and things like that. George Church is a legendary molecular biologist who's been making pioneering advances in DNA techniques and our understanding and ability to manipulate and control DNA since the early 1980s. <clears throat> he runs a lab at Harvard Medical School. He's a professor at Harvard and MIT. There's about 160 scientists working in his laboratory on everything from new ways to manipulate uh, DNA and sequence DNA to using nanopores to look for extraterrestrial genomes on Mars and things like that. So anyway, George is a fascinating guy. If you don't know much about him, uh, he's all over the internet. He's been on the Colbert Report. There's, uh, he's given TED Talks. There are profiles of him in magazines from Popular Science to Scientific American to National Geographic, you name it. George is a proponent of what's called synthetic biology, a whole new ways of rearranging nature his book on the subject is called Regenesis, How Synthetic Biology Will Reinvent Nature and Ourselves, which I think is a kind of a portentous subtitle. I met George in 2008. He's an old high school pal of my cousin Chris Bremser. And uh, Chris and I were talking one day and he said, you really should go meet George. He's a fascinating guy. He's a nice guy. And uh, he's got some wacky ideas, but he's very accomplished, and he may find your books amusing also. So through uh, Chris's introduction, I was invited to go spend an hour in George's lab in 2008, and we talked about uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, mostly he gave me his vision about where he thought science might be taking us, which was fascinating. So I left him copies of all three of my novels that existed at the time, and I wasn't expecting him to even look at them, but he, he read them all. Within a, within a couple of weeks, and he uh, put a nice review of The Pains on the internet, on Amazon, and you can find that if you're interested. Uh, and he created a Twitter account, Geo Church, and his first tweet was about me and my novels, so that was kind of flattering. I kind of got stoked by that. Um, so I didn't uh, stay in touch with George for a, a number of years. He's a busy guy, and I had other things going on. But uh, last year I heard about this technology called CRISPR, and if you haven't heard of it, you soon will. It's going to revolutionize everything. It's, um, it's a way of, of rearranging DNA, any arbitrary sequence of DNA, inside functioning cells into any other arbitrary sequence of DNA. And so it's kind of like what I invented in my novel in 1999. Um, when I heard about CRISPR, I said, I got to go talk to George again. And uh, so I sent him a note and he invited me into his laboratory last spring. And uh, we chatted for about an hour and a half. And what you're going to see now is the edited portion of the, the first part of that conversation. It's mostly George talking. Uh, I ask a few questions and he waxes eloquent. Um, it. Uh, it's not about the specific work that's going on in his lab, or at least it's not primarily about specific work going on in his lab now. It's more about uh, George's take on, on where science is uh, taking us over the next 10 or 15 years. I hope you'll enjoy it. I really enjoy talking with George. I hope you'll enjoy listening to him as well. And if you, if you do like it, uh, or if you don't, please leave me a comment below or send me an email. The particulars will be uh, on a slide at the end of the video. And uh, maybe if you like our conversation, you'll check out my novels, Acts of the Apostles, Cheap Complex Devices, The Pains, and the new one, BioDigital. Uh, George liked them. Maybe you'll like them, too. Okay, enjoy the show. What's our agenda today? Well, our agenda is, as always, I want you to, like, figure out compelling things I could put into my okay. novels and so forth. Okay. Um, but also, I, I did read your book. I'm going to have to go back and read it six yeah. times to, to make sure I, <laughs> I understand it. And I had it prompted a, a bunch of general questions. Yeah. So let me just give this is the overall mm -hmm. outline that uh, mm -hmm. stuff I would like to talk about. Yeah. I'd like to talk about your book and what your reaction is the 
public reaction has yeah. been to it. Okay. I want to talk with you, just have you wax eloquent on basically the idea of civilization. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and I'll give you a context for that. And, and so I'm, I'm writing this novel called Creation Science, yeah. and it's got these, you know, George Church type figures who are building new f forms of life in the laboratory and conceptualizing new yeah. definitions of life and yeah. information theory and yeah. Yeah. engineering genomes and so forth. And then we've also got creation scientists, yeah. uh, and they've got their dinosaur parks and their yeah. and their weird right. theologies. Yeah. And then I've got uh, uh, creation myths and people who are, are tracking the. Uh, alien beings hiding in planets that are hidden behind Saturn or whatever. Oh. And so anyway, it's just, it's just stuff that you put in a cool. crackpot novel. Yeah. But, but I've been thinking a lot um, about um, anti-science, yeah. you know, like creationism. Yeah. On Martha's Vineyard, we have uh, something like 40% uh, in one, uh, unvaccination rate in one of the schools, oh, and this yeah. is on light, enlightened Massachusetts, enlightened Martha's Vineyard, yeah. and then we, you know, we have anti-science. You know, vaccination is an entirely anti-science. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's also game theory, which is if everybody else gets vaccinated and I right. don't, um, I get the benefit without the, right the free rider. Even though, even though it's very very low risk, it's still yeah. it's even lower risk than I get vaccinated yeah. if if everybody else is. Yeah. But anyway, I think about you know the Taliban and the ISIS and these people yeah. who are, yeah. whose agenda is to destroy civilization, yeah. and we go back to some kind of, you know, whatever state you want to call that. And we see that in I think in our own Congress. Well, you go back yeah. to a state where you could have more progeny, uh, right? You know, yeah. I mean, there are people like me that's, that's supposedly successful, but you know, I have one child, right? Yeah. You know, you, get busy. In the, George. In, in the old days, you know, I could I could have like you know. Eight wives and forty kids. Yeah, know, right. And, yeah, uh, and so you need a more primitive society to arrange that. Really. Right. Yeah. Or primitive by by our modern standards, you know. And so I'm going to give you one more seed point, and then you can just yeah. talk. All right. Yeah, sure. um, and the other seed point is I just uh, finished reading a book um, called Countdown to Zero Day: The History of the Stuxnet Virus, how they how it was discovered, and uh, what it does. Are you familiar with the, the basic mechanism of this thing? I, I'm not nearly as familiar. I mean, I, I know the term, but I, I well, so this was didn't, the, I didn't really This was a it. very sophisticated uh, attack mounted by the United States and Israel against oh, Iran. Oh, Iran, yes. Right? Okay, and, got it, yes. And so what happened right, so was... The centrifuges. The centrifuges, right? The nuclear and, yeah. So there's a great book out by a writer named Kim Zetter, or Zetton, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, and it describes how the thing yeah. was discovered because they did yeah. took all kinds of precautions so it would never be discovered. Yeah. But of course, you never think of everything. Yeah. And well, and Iran presumably took some precautions so it wouldn't happen. Too. Right, right, so, right. Well, but, I mean, it's only fair. But, I mean, if I had to choose between it happening and then getting discovered, yeah. actually, discovery is not such a bad thing. You know, oh, but, think, but that's think, but that's I, the point. So yeah. let me just say because because yeah. so it attacks these embedded controllers, which basically run yeah. civilized life, yeah. right? right? They control everything: the Hoover yeah. Dam and the right. electrical grid yeah. in Boston yeah. and the centrifuges in Iran. Yeah. And right. these things are inherently unsecure. Yeah. And and when this attack vector got out into the wild and yeah. people figured out how it worked, now it's a blueprint yeah. for anybody. In yeah, the world, any yeah. criminal gang, that's true. or, yeah, or okay, any, that's, yeah. I thought if it were just a matter of who gets credit for the bad, you know, for the right. the act, right? I, that's okay. But yes, the recipe getting out is not good. Yeah, right. Just like the recipe for atom and hydrogen bombs being out there is right. not such a great thing, or the recipe for making smallpox and various flu variations is not great. Right. Uh, but, so now yeah. we're getting into our sweet spot. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've said in public that, uh, and other people as well, is that we're getting to a point where we're enabling smaller and smaller groups to do bigger and bigger things. Right. right? It used to be that if you wanted to be a mass murderer and all you had was a rock, um, by the time you kill a few people, they'd be killing you, right? You, right. Know, uh, you know, it's just, it was just really hard work to, to, uh, to hurt a lot of people. 
and and then we got you know uh, bows and arrows, and you could you could wipe out a dozen people if you were super, if you yeah. were in a good location, and uh, and then you know automatic weapons, uh, and again location is key, and and now we're getting weapons of mass destruction, which a fairly large team can assemble, and then finally you know near the end of time uh we where we are now right. <laughs> you know at the edge of uh you know 2012 i hear the world's going to end uh you know right. and uh, we're we're dodge uh, that bullet <laughs> yeah right but there's a, there's always another one i'm sure 2016 is yeah. a, there's some kind of uh uh existential crisis but anyway they uh now you can do it with a small team and right. then someday with a single individual who had a bad day at right. school, or his girlfriend left him, or you know, right. and he figures, well, why just take out my girlfriend or myself? Uh, why not just take out everybody? You know, right. because clearly it's a broken system. If I'm this sad, probably everybody else in the world is this sad. I'll just put them all out of their misery, right? right. Or, or who knows? Maybe even less logical uh, brain right. patterns, right. because there's a whole range of brain patterns that varies with person, with time of uh, of day. So, anyway, so that's dangerous, and. It's not clear there's a real solution to it. Every now and then, there will be these calls for moratoria on uh, research or on publishing research. And, and all that means is that you manage to get a few people who are inclined to listen to you, which tend to be the good actors, right. behaving even better in some way. Right. And then the bad guys are still off doing their research and, and not publishing and sharing right. it in their right. little secret right. uh, sharing rooms. And, uh, and you haven't really, you've kind of accomplished the opposite because now the good guys are ill-prepared for what the realities are. Right. Because they're right. not looking into it. They're putting on blinders. And then all the bad guys are just having a field day because there's this whole new field of science that they have exclusive uh, right. insight into. Right. So that's not good. So not publishing is a problem. Publishing is also a problem. I mean, I... When the smallpox sequence came out, some of you know 1918 flu virus sequence, I said, "Would I? Am I jealous of them being? Would I have liked to have been a first author or last author in that figure?" And I said, "No, I wouldn't. Yeah. But would I have stopped it if I were a regulator? Yeah, it's hard. You know, it's hard right. to do that too. Right. So it's like. So anyway, that's you know, I think that's where this Stuxnet virus thing is is going. I mean, hopefully, the people who wrote the code are in a in a good position to protect the stuff. Well, that's 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 the thing. That's yeah. a, and I really recommend this book and, to and you. So, and so, by by thinking of how you would hurt somebody else, you can immediately start paranoically protecting yourselves. But let, let me tell you what they actually did. You yeah. may find this interesting. Yeah. So, so in in hacker speak, there's a thing called zero day. Yeah. As in a zero day bug is just a one a vulnerability. That hasn't been exploited yet, yeah, yeah. right? So the hackers call them ho days yeah. for zero day. Yeah. And so, what do you do if you find if you're a security researcher and you yeah. find a ho day? You find a you find an open door on yeah. Macintosh operating system. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well you could do a couple of things. You could report it to yeah. Macintosh, right? right. You, you get very little that, out of that. You, you, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you might even get arrested and sent to jail if somebody says, "Oh, he was he was he poking much, around. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. poking around well, without authorization, that? right?" Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, so you could report it to responsible authorities, yeah. or in the, you could write an exploit for it. Yeah. Now you're a criminal. You can find, use that to get into the bank and steal people's money with it. Yeah. Or you could go onto the gray market and sell it to buyers. Yeah. And this market has sell emerged. Than, you can sell it more than once. You can yeah. sell it, right. <laughs> well, that's a, that's, that might get you shot. But if you, let's say you, so it turned out the National Security Agency, our yeah. NSA, yeah. Yeah. was going out and stockpiling these hodays, yeah. these exploits, oh, that, right. so that they could use them to attack Iran and whoever yeah. else. Right. And this is part of what the Snowden revelations also, yeah. also showed, yeah. is, is that instead of doing as you say, oh, we found a vulnerability, we can patch that, they yeah. weren't. They were, because they said, oh, these are back doors right. that we know how to get into. Well, no, now. but I was, I was thinking they could patch it for their systems. But, but how could you? Not, if it's if it's in Microsoft Windows, I, right? That you, you know, you, I don't know. Anyway, I mean, you know, yeah. that, that's what, that's what they paid big bucks for is for, yeah. you know, maybe they have another chip that they put into to all the Defense Department computers yeah. that that undoes the, the. But I don't well, know. But, you know, the scary thing is they were just thinking offensively. They weren't thinking defensively. They weren't thinking about how to protect the USA. They were just thinking about how to get Iran. Yeah, so. and it's it's also very interesting that 
you know, safety is a big part of many engineering disciplines, right? right? And, and I am personally attracted to it for some reason. It's not, it's not like it gets a lot of glory in academic uh, circles, you know, it's right. like, or at least hasn't until recently. I think it might, uh, but, 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 you know, the engineers, academic or industrial that design, you know, airbags and seat belts and, you know, stop signs and, uh, you know, you know, warning signs that say "wash your hands." Right, right. Employees should wash their hands before they go. Right. You know, there's, there's just their culture is full of them, but they're really not very glorious, right? You know? Right. And uh, so we we do things that uh, where we try to think. There's a cutting edge to every discipline. You know, right. there's there's a cutting edge to say CRISPR genome engineering, right? Where you go out there and you do maybe germline genome engineering, right? That's, yep. that's in the news these days, and that's a cutting edge, but. There should be a cutting edge to safety as right. well, and ethics for that matter. And so we've, we've published a few papers that I consider cutting edge of safety engineering and, and bioethics. Um, and I wonder why there isn't more of that. You know, right. there's, you know, bridges, buildings, uh, you know, there's there's a long history, uh, you know, cars. And, and so that's forth. my background in software engineering. I've always been safety. in software process improvement oh. and bug defect prevention. Right. So, but this goes beyond bugs. I mean, yeah. safety, the biggest, well, I understand, the, but I'm just biggest that, safety yeah. and security risk in general are human beings. Uh, right. We're, we're the most infectious agent uh, on the planet, and we're right. also the you know, good source of, 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 of errors. Uh, and bugs, I guess, are human, mostly. Uh, so, uh, so, you know, the question is, why, you know, why isn't there more? The, the Romans, as I heard it, I haven't actually hunted down this apocryphal story, but it was said that uh, whenever they would build a major transport bridge, you know, say for transporting the Roman army into a new land, they would have the architect of the bridge and, and the chief engineer stand underneath the bridge as the army goes over it. Right. <laughs> Figuring if, if some of the army falls into the ravine, yeah. they will land on top of the architect and right. engineer. Right. <laughs> they wanted to worry about them, and it's and it's it was considered a motivating. You know, right, I would think so. Motivating, <laughs> very high. Yeah. Quality standards, and so that's way back, you know, two thousand years ago. Uh, do we have similar things for, uh, you know, in this highly, you know, capitalistic and freedom-oriented society? Probably your average engineer would run for the hills right. rather than rather than say, "Hey, sign me up! I want to stand underneath my bridge." Right. Right. Uh,